Merry Christmas. Christ the Redeemer, Catholic Church in Thibodeau, Louisiana, welcomes you to Christmas 2014. The following homily was recorded live as Father Mark Toops invites us to celebrate the gift of the incarnation, for Christ has become one of us. As always, we welcome you to join us at Christ the Redeemer and experience our family. Until we see you, remember that God is tirelessly pursuing you. Trust in his mercy and let him make 2015 your best year ever. Now, Father Mark. Well, Merry Christmas to you. I want to say welcome tonight for all of our guests and visitors. Merry Christmas from our family to yours. If uh, you're joining us tonight because Thibodeau was home and you came home for the holidays, I want to say welcome home. It's good to have you. Maybe Christ the Redeemer was your home and now you've gone away. The, the pilgrimage of life has taken you somewhere else. Welcome home. Good to have you with us tonight. Merry Christmas to you. If uh, tonight's your first time at Christ the Redeemer, maybe uh, this is the holiday season and the, and the Christmas spirit brought you into our church tonight. If the, tonight's your first time with us, hey, welcome to our family. Good to have you th this evening. I just want to say Merry Christmas to you also. And, uh, and how about the last welcome? Yeah, that comes from the heart of a mama. And, and that's what our moms would know. When I was a, a teenager into some of my college years, my mom would sometimes say to all of her kids, she'd say to us at Christmas, all I want for Christmas is for my babies to go to church. <laughs> so if you're here tonight because your mama asked you to come to church tonight, I just want to say welcome. Good to have you with us tonight. Whatever brought you here and whoever brought you here, uh, I can tell you the one person who wants to say Merry Christmas to us, and that is Jesus Christ himself. So welcome. It's good to have you tonight. Uh, tonight, we celebrate lots of things, and there's an awesome story that's happening. I want to jump right into the story because I think that there are a couple people in this story that tonight that could really show us how merry this Christmas is and how awesome this year could be for all of us. Tonight's gospel came from Luke chapter 2, and we picked it up on page 39 in the missalette. If you've got that cracked open, you can follow along with me. If not, just kind of maybe steal a missalette from side by on the side of you. But on page 39, we read in that second paragraph from Luke chapter 2 that there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over the flock. Let me just stop right there. Lots of details in the story that can actually offer us great hope. So what's up with the night watch of these shepherds? Well, let me come on over here. And John Paul, why don't you come give me a hand, brother? John Paul, my magical assistant, he's going to help me with the shepherds tonight. Come on over here to the nativity scene. I'm going to grab a shepherd. Yeah, just grab, grab the one over there, the one with the red hat. I'm going to bring the shepherds over here. I'm going to put him right here. Everybody kind of say, hi, shepherd. There he is right there. Absolutely. Put the other one, put, put the other one right here. So here you are. You have two shepherds right here. You got, uh, let's, let's call this guy uh, Bobby, and let's just call this guy Billy. Yeah, Bobby and Billy, and they're both shepherds, and, um, and they spend their whole day with sheep. And, and uh, it says that they were in that region, and the gospel actually says to us tonight, in the fields, and they were keeping the night watch over the flock. So what's up with the night watch? Well, here's a story. At night, all of the sheep would finish grazing and they would sleep. They were, gonna be, they were in the mountains. That's where a lot of the, the, the grazing was. They would, they would graze on top of the mountain. And at night, what the shepherd would do is he would take all of his sheep and he would put them inside a cave. That way, the, if it rained at night, they were kept dry. Or if it was cold outside, they could all kind of huddle together. And the, and the body heat of the sheep would kind of keep themselves warm. So at night, all of the sheep were in the cave after grazing on the mountain all day. And the shepherd, he would stand at the base of the, the front of the cave and he would keep watch at night. And he would look for wolves or he would look for anything that would threaten his flock. And the shepherds would rotate here. So it says there were the shepherds in that region and they were keeping the night watch over the flock. That's what they were doing. They were just kind of standing up at night and they were just kind of making sure that nothing would happen. And it's just an ordinary day. Two ordinary guys, Billy and Bobby, they're both shepherds. And they're just keeping the night watch. And you just can imagine what happens between Billy and Bobby as they kind of talk about their flock and they can just kind of talk about their life. And they just kind of talk about uh, the, the night watch. And 
So Bobby comes over here to Billy, and Billy looks right back at Bobby, and they kind of have a conversation about life. And you can just imagine what Bobby says to Billy, and Billy says to Bobby. Bobby looks at Billy and says right now, he says, hey, what do you think the Saints are going to do in the offseason? And Billy looks at Bobby and says, man, I hope to do something with their defense. And Bobby looks right back at Billy and says, do you think they're going to fire Rob Ryan? And he looks right back at him and says, man, I don't know what they need. I think they need a miracle. And Bobby looks right back at Billy and says, yeah, maybe a miracle like God becoming man. (laughs) So they just kind of keep talking back and forth about life and about what's going on. And and that's what they do because they're just two ordinary shepherds. Bobby and Billy. Let's get to know Bobby and Billy. Here's, Here's Bobby the shepherd. And this is what happens in Bobby's life. Bobby just woke up this morning. Bobby's an ordinary guy, and he's, let's just say he's, he's 45 years old, and he's been married for about 20 years. And he woke up this morning thinking that he was going to do the same thing that he did the night before, and he, he thinks that he's going to do that tomorrow night too because Bobby is just on the treadmill of life, and he's just kind of going through life over and over and over, and he doesn't really know that there's more out of life because he's just kind of caught up, and he's just kind of doing the same thing that he's always done. Bobby, the shepherd, he's been married for 20 years and, and things aren't as uh, inflamed and as passionate in his 20 year of marriage as they were on the day of his wedding. But, um, you know, he's just kind of there and he's just kind of comfortable and he's got some kids and he has a relationship with his kids, but not the best relationship with his kids. And, you know, and he's just kind of resigned himself to the, that the best that he can possibly have in life is maybe just coping And so he's going to go to work and he's going to be a shepherd and he's going to come home and he's going to be married. But he really gets excited on the weekends whenever there's a football game on because that kind of gives him some some temporary excitement in life. And for Bobby, the most exciting thing in his life is what's happening with football and how well the Saints do in their football season. Bobby, the shepherd. Bobby's not really happy, but Bobby's just doing the best that he possibly can. And here's Billy over here, Billy the shepherd. He's, he's kind of in the neighboring and flock, and, and he, he enjoys hanging out with, 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 with Bobby because, well, that's just the way the life is. And he's got some friends, but it's the same friends he's always had. And, and those friends really aren't necessarily making his life better, but they are making things a little bit easier to kind of get through in life. And and, and you see Bobby over here, he's got lots of questions about life. He wants to know how is it that bad things happen to good people. And he wants to know how is it that God could be an all good God, but yet not answer all of his prayers. And, 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 and Bobby over here has kind of gotten disgruntled with church. And he just wishes that church was real. And he sees the hypocrisy in church or he sees the humanity of church or he just kind of wants more out of life, but he doesn't know what church he can trust. And, and so he's just kind of popped from church to church to church, looking for a place where he feels safe and hoping that somebody would answer his questions. And he's got lots of questions about life and at night when it's dark and he just looks at the stars and, and looks at the sheep who are sleeping, he kind of asks a lot of questions about life. And he doesn't have the language of looking for more, but what Bobby and Billy are both looking for is more and they don't even know that they're looking for more. And both of them are on the treadmill of life and they just kind of wonder sometimes, it has got to be more to life than just like what we've been doing. And they were keeping the night watch that night, and they were just ordinary guys going through ordinary life, asking some really extraordinary but yet ordinary questions. And, and all of a sudden, everything changed for one of them that night. Bobby and Billy, both shepherds, keeping the night watch on a sacred and silent night. So, of course, we know the rest of the story, right? So we have Billy. Billy goes back to his flock over here. Come on over, Billy. Come back to your flock. And, and Bobby's over here, and he's keeping the night watch. And, and, the, and the gospel continues for us. We pick it up back in the story. It says that the angel of the Lord appeared to Bobby, the shepherd, and the glory of the Lord shone upon him. And Bobby was struck with great fear. And the angel says, hey, Bobby, don't be afraid. 
For I proclaim to you good news of great joy for all people. I am bringing you something that is filled with joy. I am bringing you a message tonight, Bobby, that's going to change your life if you would like your life to be changed. He says, for, to, for, for, for today, for you, Bobby, a Savior has been born. The Savior of the world. God has been born into the world. And Bobby, that's going to be great news for you. And of course it says for us that you're going to go over here and you're going to find an infant um, lying in a manger. So here comes Bobby and Bobby comes on over here. Come on, Bobby. He's coming on over here. He's walking over, over here to the manger. And of course it's exactly what he saw is, is what the angel said. He comes over here and he sees the infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and you got Mary and Joseph and you got a, a cow and a, and a lamb and all kinds of other things that are there. And the reason why it was so close for him is because the earliest traditions in the church actually have Jesus being born in a cave. So in the fourth century, whenever Constantine has his conversion, his mother Helena, the first place that she went was to Bethlehem because as a mama, she wanted to know where the boy was born. So she went to Bethlehem where the story has it that he was born in Bethlehem. And she said, hey, where was Jesus born? And everybody in the fourth century said, hey, on the outskirts of the city, in the caves, in the mountains. And that's where they built this, the, the first basilicas over the place where um, everybody then thought Jesus was born. So if here's a cave and here's where Bobby is and here's a cave where here's where Billy is, you can imagine that that's why it was so easy for him to find Mary, Joseph, and Jesus because they were in a cave also. And so the shepherd goes over here and he goes to the cave and he finds out what's happening and he says, oh my God, I can't believe it. God is now with us. And he comes on back over here. Come on back over here. And after his visit, he returns to his life. He returns to where he was. Now we pick it up in Luke chapter 2, just on page 41. If you want to just flip it on over to page 41, the church gives us lots of options for the gospel tonight. So if we just keep reading the story from the Mass at dawn right here, it says this. It says, the angels went away to heaven and the shepherds said, let us go. They found what was there. And then it says the last line, then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen just as it had been told to them. So here comes Bobby the shepherd and he comes back to where he was before the angel came to him and he is praising God. Wow. His life has changed. Bobby now is filled with peace. Bobby now is filled with joy. Bobby actually has direction in life. Bobby actually has the very thing in his heart that he has been longing for, which is something more out of life. And every desire that Bobby has been asking for has been fulfilled in that moment. Just for a second, Bobby can rest at night and he's happy in life and he doesn't need other things to make him happy. Just for a second, Bobby the shepherd who God revealed himself to in the angel and brought him on over here to see Jesus. Now Bobby is filled with grace and peace and Bobby's happy he comes back praising God you can tell his life is changed now here comes Billy Billy the shepherd Billy, Billy wasn't there Billy was kind of attending to his own flock but it's been a little while since um, he had to take the night watch and so Billy comes bopping over here and here comes Billy and looking at Bobby and oh my God something's different Billy can easily tell that Bobby has had something happen to him that night. So Bobby looks at Billy and Billy looks at Bobby. You can just imagine the conversation between two shepherds late at night, 2,000 years ago, one of them who has just seen God. And the conversation went something like this. Bobby looks at Billy. Dude, dude, <laughs> man, bruh, dude. You know, how guys talk to each other. And Billy looks at Bobby. Dude. <laughs> Bobby says to Billy, man, I was out here and an angel spoke to me tonight. I saw this thing from the sky. I was looking up at the sky and an angel spoke to me. And Billy looks at Bobby, you know, like guys would do. He says, Hey, man, I thought, you were, I thought you were sober. I thought you were going to the AA meetings. You been drinking again? 
Dude, I'm serious, man. I really saw an angel. And check this out. Not only did I see an angel, but I actually went and the angel told me that Jesus is here, which is God, by the way. And he's a baby and he's over there in a cave with his mom and dad and he's wrapped in swaddling clothes and he's lying in a manger. And God is real and he's a part of our life. And Billy looks at Bobby and says, yeah, man, sure. <laughs> Whatever you say. Bobby and Billy. Bobby had his life changed on Christmas. And Billy didn't. And the question tonight is which one do you want to be? Both of these guys were searching. Both of these guys needed God in their life, and they didn't even know it. Both of these guys, the only thing that they knew was that they were expecting 2015 to be the same as 2006 because it was the same as 2000, and nothing's really changed since 1995, and they've just been doing the same thing over and over and over and kind of popping in and popping out and asking questions about life, but just they feel like they're on the treadmill of life where you're working real hard, but you're not really going anywhere fast. Both of these guys were in the same place where life was a relentless pursuit of the next vacation or the next diversion or I'm more excited about Black Friday and shopping than I am about my eternal salvation. Both of these guys were there. And this guy had his life changed forever. And this guy didn't. And the question for us today is, which one do you want to be? Merry Christmas. Jesus Christ has come to us so that you don't have to go through 2015 the same person that you were in 2014. He has come to bring us joy and peace and freedom. And the good news for us today is that Bobby was out there in the field and the angel was revealed, revealed a message to him and Bobby went and the scriptures say to us in Luke chapter two that when he got to the cave, when he got to the manger, it says for us right there that he found everything as the angel had revealed to him. Bobby the shepherd goes over here and he finds what he was looking for and he thinks that he found God but the good news for Bobby tonight and the good news for all of us tonight is that Bobby didn't find God. God found Bobby. It was the angel who was revealing himself to Bobby not vice versa. It was the angel who gave a message to Bobby not Bobby who gave the, the angel his heart it was the angel who led Bobby to go find Jesus. It wasn't Bobby who was searching for the next cool thing or the thing that was going to make him happy. You see, even though Bobby thinks that he found God, God found the shepherds, and that is the Merry Christmas. God is pursuing us. God wants to find us. God is coming after us. It's not us who are pursuing God. It's God who's pursuing us. Merry Christmas, the reason that God has come to us on earth as a human being is so that if you've ever wondered if God is listening to your prayers, he is saying to us, hey, I have a face, I have ears. Not only am I listening, but I want to do some speaking. And if you've ever wondered if God is real, is God really visible? Is God actually somebody who exists? Then he has come to us at Christmas so that we might know that he has a name and his name is Jesus and he was real and he really became a human being and, and, and the shepherds saw it and God is real. Merry Christmas. And that baby grows up and later on he says to all of us, he says, he has come to let the oppressed go free, to, to, to proclaim liberty to captives, to a recovery of sight to the blind. You see, God is coming to us this Christmas. It's not us who are coming to God. God is trying to find us. 
And I proclaim to all of us today that next year, 2015, can be the best year of your life. You don't have to be Billy anymore. You can be Bobby the shepherd if you want to. And the question for us tonight is, do you want your life to be changed? Which one of these guys do you want to be? You see, this time next year, Christmas of 2015, where do you want to be? You want to be the exact same spot in life? Do you want to be the exact same spot spiritually? Or do you want more? Like, imagine with me. Imagine with me if 2015 were the best year of your life. Imagine if next year Christmas you, you actually found what you were looking for. Imagine if your marriage was stronger. Imagine if your relationship with your kids was even better. Imagine if you were, you were able to rest without the anxiety or without the fear that sometimes kind of picks up and grips you. Imagine with me if 2015 you had some of the answers to some of the questions that have been asking you rather than you asking them. Imagine if this time next year you were like Bobby and your life were changed. You see, I don't know what brought you here to church tonight, but I know who brought you, and that's God. And I don't know what you were looking for tonight, but I can promise you what he wants to give you, and that's his very self. And I can only imagine that for some of us, as you walked into church tonight, it's been a long time since you believed in God or heard God or felt God, or maybe 2014 was the greatest year of your life, or maybe 2014 was a tough year and you just wanted to end. But wherever you are on the journey, God is saying to all of us tonight, keep your presence. He wants to give you the gift of himself this Christmas so that our lives could be changed. And who do you want to be? This guy or this guy? Because right now, God is knocking on the door of your heart. And as the angel came to the shepherd, he is coming to you tonight. He's simply asking you, if he has permission to work in your life right now. Regardless of where you are in life, you can be super, super high or super, super low. You can feel close to God or distant to God. God is just simply asking for permission. Does he have permission to enter your life and to walk with you in 2015? Because if he does, all you have to do is say yes to him in the silence of your heart right now. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we want more out of life. Lord, we want more freedom. Lord, we want more peace. Lord, we want, we want more of you. And Lord, we want our lives to be changed. We don't want we don't want to keep continuing to go through life tired or unhappy, looking for the next diversion. We want, we want something more in our life tonight, and we simply give you permission. Lord, anybody who walked into church tonight just looking for a message and begging you to speak to them, I ask that you would do that right now. Anybody who walked into church tonight like with questions, I ask that you would give them the answers right now. Any of us who, who desired more out of our marriage, Lord, make this the best year of our marriage. Any of us who are searching in life, Lord, help us to find what we're looking for in you. Give us the graces that we need to continue to let ourselves be found by you. And I ask that you would pour forth blessings upon us now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.